Hello. It's so good to welcome everyone tonight. Hope you've had a warm day. I hope your night was warm traveling back. Amen. So it's good to see you. We're going to have a wonderful time tonight. Uh, let me share with you what we're going to do in just a few moments after our youth and our children go to their classes. We're going to bring a study on prayer walking. Uh, we're going to take a detour from Proverbs for tonight, talk about prayer walking a little bit, and then we're going to get into our bulletin, and we're going to update our bulletin. There's a lot of names that's on the back of our bulletin we have no details about, and so we like to be detailed tonight about it. So if you'll look on the back of the bulletin, if you have one, about some folks that's on there, if you know what the situation is, we'd like to know that. So we'll get into that in just a few moments. Any announcements you want to share with us? Um, yes, ma'am. I still have four names from the, the school from Jesse May um, for the children. I have four names left. Um, if you're interested in taking a child, please let me know. Okay. Anyone else? If by chance um, you were not here Sunday night and you had signed up for the <coughs> Presidia, um, I would appreciate it if you take it Sunday night. <laughs> Two of them I know who they belong to, but the rest of them I, I've not checked with them yet. But we know that you signed up. They did not take it home, so they just want to come Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, World Star Five is not working on some of the choir stuff at 7 30. So anybody that can sing or do sing in the choir, please come on back tomorrow. Okay. Sounds good. If no other announcements, prayer requests. Yes, ma'am. I have a friend, Bruce Lewis, and I, her husband got saved about <coughs> three weeks ago. He passed away today. And just pray for Bruce Lewis and her family. Yes, amen. Yes, sir. Joy, she's hurt a little bit. Oh, very special. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Appreciate it, everyone. You remember Faith. Some of you know she has a broken foot, and we found out Monday at the we saw the ankle and foot team at Emerge Ortho that it's actually a little worse than we thought. They've taken her out the boot and put her in a cast. She goes back in three weeks and then we'll see from there. Uh, yes. Our son in law Stephen has COVID, so he's been pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Very special. Let's remember the Jimmy Lee family. He'll be laid to rest tomorrow. Also, Faye Clemens has passed away today. Remember her family, Mr. Jimmy, and do not have no arrangements yet. Uh, we'll let that be known when we find out. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would say please thank everybody for the prayers for the surgery on his foot. And thank you for all the birthday wishes, all the calls, and the letters, and the cards, and thank you for everything. Amen. So much. And hopefully, he'll be back before too much. Yes. Amen. Let's also remember Miss Mickey as she continues to recover <coughs> from her surgery today. Anyone else? But by the uplifted hand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, Lord, for this time that we can come together to worship you in spirit and in truth, to look together into your holy and precious word, to have a time of prayer. We're so grateful, Lord, for all the blessings you have blessed us with throughout our lives, even into this past week. And so, Father, I pray that as we now take time to lift these names up and these individuals that we have just mentioned, and you know the desires of our hearts and what we all stand in need of, as we take them to your throne of mercy, I pray, Lord, that you would intervene and move in every situation, whatever is needed in that particular life, Lord, whether it's comfort for those who have loved ones who's passed on, healing for those who have just been through surgeries or have had accidents and recuperating at home, or Lord, that it's just a burden or a trouble that needs to be lifted. Father, we know that you know every situation, whatever it is, and we just take them all to you. We thank you and we praise you and thank you, Lord, as we continue all throughout this service tonight. It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So, children singing? All right, youth choir, we're ready. After the youth choir, all the children and youth may go to your classes.
In the Spirit, we are one. In the Lord, we are one. In the Spirit, we are one. In the Lord, and we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And then, though we are Christians by our love, we are one. We will work with each other, we will work side by side, and we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And although we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, I know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come. And all praise to Jesus, His only Son. And all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And I know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, I know we are Christians by our All right, in our Bibles, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, this is what it says. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Our Heavenly Father, we ask once again you will bless uh, this Bible study. And Father, help us to glean from it what you would have us to to help us in our daily walk. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you go anywhere of any distance at all, that walking is probably not the mode of travel you would choose to go by. You'd probably want to go by airplane or helicopter or by vehicle or some sort, bus or train. But walking is probably not the very first thought if you got to go somewhere of any distance. However, our GPS, as we have on our phones, they give us the exact mileage and the total time it would take you to get there by different modes of travel. For instance, from my house where I live at to the church by using my GPS on my phone, by vehicle, it takes 38 minutes to arrive. Now, that's driving the speed limit in normal uh, traffic conditions. If I was to choose to come by bicycle, then that GPS says it would take me two hours and 48 minutes to travel. If I was to walk to church from where I live at, then that GPS says, and this is the shortest route, 11 hours and 44 minutes to travel here. And so it's pretty safe to assume I'm not going to travel by foot. Yeah, I'm going to try some other mode to get here. There is nothing glamorous about walking when you have to get from one to another. It's simply something we have to do at times, but if it's a long distance, we normally don't think about walking to get it done. But let me tell you some things to walk. First of all, walking requires patience. If you're walking because your vehicle's broke down and you got to get somewhere and you're walking, it takes patience because you're going to get there eventually, but it's not going to be as quick as if you were in a vehicle traveling. Walking requires determination. You got to stay at it. You got to keep going because you're going to want to quit. You're going to want to sit down and rest, but you got to keep on at it. Walking requires resolve. 
You better get in shape if you're going to walk into some space and time. You're walking from the couch to the refrigerator don't take much exertion. But walking from my house to right here takes a lot of exertion. So I need to be in shape if I'm going to do that time of walking. Isaiah 40, 31. Listen to it once again. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. When you think about it, walking has its benefits. To be honest with you, walking is good for us physically. It helps keep our muscles going. If you were to sit down or lay down and never move, never do anything, then your legs would get weak. And then you would try to walk and you couldn't. Many people have been in accidents or they have some kind of injury and they can't walk for a long time and they have to learn how to walk all over again. And they go to physical therapy and they help them with that. So physically it helps our muscles stay in shape. It is one of the best exercises. Out of all the exercises to keep people fit, they say walking is one of the best for just about everybody. Because it works so many. I mean, you work your arms, you work your legs, you work your abdomen, you work your core. I mean, everything's involved in walking. Benefits our heart. Keeps our heart, that blood pumping, and keeps everything flowing. And so walking has its benefit physically. But it also has its benefits spiritually. Walking with the Lord is a good thing. Amen? There's nothing better than walking with the Lord hand in hand. And as we wait for God to answer our prayers, we go to Him, we ask of Him our petitions, our prayers, and we walk the Christian walk, and all that time we're waiting on God. You know, when I go to the grocery store, if I'm by myself, I've got a set pace. I mean, if I'm by myself, I'm going to give you an example. This is how I walk. I'm on the hunt. I'm going after what I come after. I know what I'm doing, and I get there. But now, if Susie's with me, then I walk like this. Because she don't have the same pace I got. And sometimes I find myself getting ahead of her, and I look, and I have to wait. Then she'll catch up, and I'll walk a little bit further. But it's a different pace when she's with me than if I'm by myself. And so think about that. Because you and I walk at different paces as well. But have you ever thought about walking with God? Did we ever get ahead of Him? And we sort of got to slow down and wait for God to catch up. Can't God be agonizingly slow in answering our prayers? We're wanting an answer immediately. We go to Him in prayer. We ask Him, God, please fulfill my request. And God is just taking His time. You're just like me with Susie, i got to learn to wait. Let her catch up and then walk a little bit more until she catches up and then walk a little bit more. That's the way it is with God. Because God's pace and my pace is not the same. And it seems like He can be agonizingly slow in answering my request. And by the way, prayer is all about communion with the holy, righteous God. It's a privilege to pray. A holy, righteous God allows us to commune with Him, to be in contact with Him. And so walking with God is something we all need to do. Now, now if I'm by myself, I'm on the hunt, I'm doing things, but if I'm with Susie, well, I have the enjoyment of her by my side. And I have a wonderful time in communion with her. We're talking with each other. Same thing if I'm walking with God. If I get a head by myself, where are you? But if I'm walking at God's pace, then it's wonderful communion. We're there together. And I talk with Him and He talks with me. And by the way, there are many ways to pray. Think about it. We pray while sitting. We pray while standing. We pray while kneeling, and we pray with our hands in front, uh, clasped or folded. We pray with our hands outstretched towards heaven, and we pray with our eyes open. We pray with our eyes closed. So there's many ways to pray. But how about a prayer walk? 
What does that consist of? Prayer walks have been around for thousands of years. Did you know that? Adam walked in the cool of the day with God. Before sin entered the earth, before sin entered Adam, he used to walk with God day by day until sin entered in. Then he hid and God had to look for him. Now he knew where he was, but he wanted Adam to answer out loud what was going on. When you think about it, Enoch walked with God. The Bible says he walked with God and he walked not for God took him. What does that mean? Well, Enoch walked with God every day and every day they got just a little bit closer to heaven and earth. One day God said, Enoch, you're so much closer to my home than you are yours. Why don't you just come on home and live with me? And God took him. And so prayer walking was way back during those days. Think about Joshua. They did a prayer walk around the walls of Jericho. One time a day for six days. On the seventh day, they walked seven times around Jericho. They blew the trumpets to give out a shout, and the walls came tumbling down. That's what the Bible says. And so prayer walks have been something that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. Have you ever thought about doing a prayer walk? Maybe you've been involved in a prayer walk. So how does that happen? You simply choose an area to go in and you're walking and you're praying while you're walking. It could be in your own neighborhood, around every home, around the block in your area where you stay at. It could be down the street and you could pray, Lord, bless. I don't know what's going on in that house, but please bless that house and let there be peace and comfort in that house. In every home you come by, you pray about. You could be in a park. And just pray about people or pray about situations that the Lord puts in your heart and your mind and you lift them up. You could come out to the church and do a prayer walk all around the grounds of the church asking for God's protection and God's safety. So many churches are being bombarded today with evil and wickedness going on. And so we could pray for God's hedge of protection around us. We could come inside the church and pray. Uh, I do it right often. I come in when nobody's here and I'll touch the pews. I said, God bless each and every one that sits on these pews. May they receive a blessing today throughout whatever the message is that they'll receive. I'll touch all the pews. I'll touch the sound system. I'll touch the piano. I'll touch the choir loft. I'll touch the pulpit. I said, Lord, please let us have a wonderful worship service. Let everything be in accordance with your holy and divine will. I'll go to the Sunday school classrooms. Please lift up every teacher. Let them teach your word today and let all the students that are hearing receive what you would have for us today. And so I do prayer walking all in the church, all around the church. And you know what? It gives me a wonderful feeling just to know that I'm praying on behalf of God for his people. And I wonder, do you ever do any prayer walking? Now, that's just a few ways that we can honor God by praying. Maybe you want to try calling some people. Say, let's do a prayer walk today. Would you join me? Whether it's at the park or whether it's at the church, in the church, out the church, and just agree that we're going to pray about some matters. Whether it's individuals or situations or whatever the case may be. But pray as you go. And just, you don't have to close your eyes because you'll bump into a tree if you're not careful. But keep your eyes open and just pray whatever the Lord lays in your heart. It's just like praying while you're driving. Everybody, you do know that you can pray while you're driving. I just wouldn't recommend closing your eyes while you're doing it, you know. But you can pray in just about every situation you're in. Pray for others. There is so much to pray for. And it gives me a joy to know that people are praying on behalf of other people and on behalf of our church. And so let's be involved in prayer walks. Let's be involved in praying in general. And remember in all of our praying, walk, pray, and wait on the Lord and He will answer. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, for this night and for this time we've had together to go over this scripture and the prayer walks of life. And Father, I pray that You help us in our daily walk. Help us to incorporate folks in our fellowship to pray with us and and to do some prayer walks and just lift up whatever situations that we know stand in the need of prayer or people we know stand in the need of prayer and lift them up together for you and your glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So those on Facebook are...